Hi and welcome to Chiller Chat. I'm Brian Hogue and I'm here tonight with Jim Crutt. Jim Crutt has, uh, was in Dawn of the Dead, the original Dawn of the Dead, and uh, he played an interesting character in that movie. Uh, Jim, you played the helicopter zombie. Great. Great role. Um, very easy to do. Mm -hmm. Walk on scene and die. <laughs> <laughs> in, the, in, the, in the scene, uh, the folks who are trying to escape from the zombie epidemic fly their helicopter to a small airport, which happens to be the Monroeville Airport. Mm -hmm. And uh, in that scene, as they're refueling the helicopter, I happen to come shambling out of the woods under the wing of a plane, see lunch over there refueling the mm -hmm. helicopter and start walking toward it. Mm -hmm. And as... Uh, nice my, warm meal. Uh, <laughs> it was a chilly or <laughs> somewhat rainy day, uh -huh. as I recall. And then... Uh, my character climbs up onto the boxes that, which are between him and lunch, and mm -hmm. man, the helicopter blade just sort of, you know, changed the whole weekend. Yeah, yeah, kind of, kind of put a dampener on your day. Right. Yeah. It's a, uh, it's been sort of an iconic moment. People have gone ah when they've seen it, and other ones mm -hmm. have gone yay, and other ones have just laughed. So it's it's provoked a wild variety of reactions. Mm -hmm. um, well, I hear I hear this. Um, where did I hear this from? It was it was rated as one of the top 100 most historically uh, profound moments in horror movie history. Or Bravo something Network. Like that. Yeah, okay, they did okay. That, too. I, that surprised me, but I'm okay with it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, now this this was actually uh, pulled off by Tom Savini, correct? Right. Okay. Tom Savini and I had gone to uh, college together, and mm -hmm. so I'd known Tom for quite a while. And I happened to be living in Pittsburgh many years after college, and uh, Tom asked me if I wanted to be in a movie. And I said, mm -hmm. well, I was on my way to a movie at the time, and I said, sure, I'll be in one. In about five minutes, so uh, he said, no, I'm serious. I've got this, George Romero is doing this zombie movie, and mm -hmm. got this really great role with you in mind for it. And I said, well, give me a call. Uh -huh. So he gave me a call and uh, told me about the ideas. Uh, we went to his basement, which is where he had his workshop, mm -hmm. worked on, did all the prosthetics, the head cast, and things necessary to literally pull it off. Uh-huh. Well, had you seen, did you know about Night of the Living Dead before this? Oh, I'd mean, seen Night of the Living Dead, okay, sure. Okay, okay. Pretty, pretty uh, provocative for its time. And, right. Uh, shocking, innovative. Mm -hmm. I, I loved horror films anyway. I mean, I grew up on them. Everything from them to the thing, and yeah, yeah. you know, Tingler, you name it. Everything with Vincent Price. <laughs> right. I love Vincent Price. Vincent Price, and Boris Karloff, and all. Oh uh, well, now this scene, you had your head built up. There was a prosthetic on top of your head, correct? Correct. Now, can you explain how this uh, this was pulled off? Okay. Uh, from the construction phase on, uh, Tom mm -hmm. had built, cast the, the front of my head in plaster, so I was breathing through a straw for about 20 minutes in order to uh, stay alive during the mm -hmm. plaster hardening sequence. Uh, the back half, which was okay, and after that gruesome moment, um, he called me a couple days later and said, hey, the plaster cracked, we're going to have to do it again. Mm -hmm. Which you were thrilled to hear. Yeah, I was absolutely thrilled. Uh -huh. But Tom took care of me for the makeup sessions as well as the on-set, you know, on-scene thing, so uh, I was okay with that. So we did it again. From that he had the bust of the head, 
and was able to do a build-up of the prosthetics. There was a um, sort of a rubberized foam on the top through which there were a couple channels cut. Mm -hmm. And in those channels then were tubes for blood to flow eventually. Mm -hmm. And on top of that then the rest of the head was finished and the hair was nicely done. But when Tom put it together he also cut the top of that into nice sized chunks. Mm -hmm. It was all strung together with monofilament fishing line so that there was space between each of the chunks. And then on the scene, when um, it was for the great dramatic moment of the top of the head to come off, mm -hmm. someone off set was pulling a longer piece of the monofilament, pulled it all off, it all comes off in a nice long straight string. And then two guys with hand pumps are behind the boxes pumping that blood back mm -hmm. up to these tubes which are running up my back at that time or my shirt connecting to these tubes that were embedded in the headpiece and blood just comes spurting out like a volcano. There was a lot of blood in that movie. Uh, yeah. yeah, And that was unusual yeah. too for movies at the time. Mm -hmm. A lot of the violence was implied. This is one of the opportunities you had to say, whoa, everything from uh, you know the screwdriver in the ear to right. the shotgun to the head, all that sort of stuff was happening. In it. Yeah, well you knew something was a little different in the first few minutes of the uh, movie you're seeing people's <laughs> heads getting blown up and uh, you knew you're in for a ride visually so uh, I, I've, I've dabbled in the foam latex I went to school for this at the Art Institute I now my question is did he have an extra appliance there in case the first take didn't work all I know all I can tell you Brian is that there were two outfits okay uh, I didn't know if he had a second appliance <laughs> or not ready to go but Fortunately, everything came off, literally, uh, in the first take. <laughs> okay. Well, that's good news. <laughs> and uh, when we come back, we're going to be talking about uh, some movies that uh, Jim's been in. So let's get back to the movie. And welcome back to Chiller Chat. We're here with Jim, and we're talking a little bit about uh, some of the movies that he's been in. And uh, we were just talking here about Zumthology. Now, I'm a little interested in that now that you started on this. Uh, could you explain this again? Well, the, the concept <laughs> for this movie the was uh, a little different because three independent filmmakers mm -hmm. each did a short zombie film, and then it was woven together, mm -hmm. uh, and it became the story of the kidnapping of Tiffany Shepis, who was a scream queen well-known in horror circles, mm -hmm. and in one of those segments, a slight case of zombism, I play a doctor. I'm not one, but I play one in the movie. <laughs> and uh, of when a patient comes in and he uh, is being examined for what he thinks is a case of athlete's foot, but again, his wife thinks it's more serious than that since he's been eating the neighbors. Right. And uh, gives him a <laughs> you know diagnosis. Just, just, just keep spraying it. You uh -huh. know. It'll, Hopefully it'll clear up. And you were the doctor treating him. I was the doctor. Okay. I was the doctor. Okay. Short segment, but it was a fun bit to do. Yeah. I enjoyed the heck out. Well, that's a, now you say that one's uh, three short movies. Right. In three one? short, three independent directors did did them, and then it was woven together. Okay. So that's Zomthology. Zomthology. There were going to be four, but the fourth one became too long, and developed and became Deadlands Two: Trapped. Okay. Gary Ugaric, the director of that. Uh, had cast me in as uh, Dr. Robert Mitchell, who, it's a zombie film, surprise, mm -hmm. but in this case, rather than being a zombie, I get to be the evil government official who's in charge of this outbreak, uh, which takes place in Hagerstown, Maryland. Well, that's a natural progression up from a zombie. Yeah, yeah. at least there's a promotion. Sure. <laughs> I like that. Well, well this is, um, now this one is coming out what, this year? Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, I think there's supposed to be a, a release party coming up in October for Trapped. And it's coming out on um, HD DVD. Okay. As opposed to Blu ray. They said there are like millions of people who still have these devices out there, and they're going to take care of that audience since nothing new has been produced for it <laughs> yeah. in about a year. So, anyway, <laughs> they're doing that as a segment. Mm -hmm. um, earlier film uh, I had was uh, The Guatemalan Handshake, and that I played a power plant operator who gets torn up by some lunatic who's wrecking the place. Uh, huh. 
Now, so there's a little bit there. How long ago was that? About uh, four years ago. Okay. And uh, that made the rounds of a lot of a lot of film festivals nationally. Did very well internationally as well. So uh, it's 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 been a, it's been a rush. Mm -hmm. It's been a variety. Um, I did a, have a small a small role coming up in Joe Shelby's film, The Green Man, that he's working on okay. in Pittsburgh. Joe Shelby was also one of the bikers in Dawn of the Dead. Okay. And in that. Um, I'm just a diner at Heinz Hall, harassing waitresses and things like that. Mm -hmm. So a little, again, a little variety. Mm -hmm. I like that. Uh, the other one, just a few months ago, uh, Anthony uh, Colliano is doing a film called 1224. It's a zombie film. I mean, you get your Santa zombie, you get your elf zombie, you get, you know, you get them all. I don't you know if there's all the, like zombie. All the holidays, huh? Lordy, they're all in there. Uh -huh. 1224, I guess, is Christmas Eve. Oh, okay. And in that, that one, makes sense. he said okay. he wanted to ask me if I could do a role in it, and I said, well, you know, what do you have in mind? And he said, well, wasn't quite sure yet. Mm -hmm. So it got closer and closer to the time, he said, well, look, this is the last day we're going to be shooting, and uh, I said, well, look, I'm on my way to Pittsburgh. I, I do uh, some um, Society for Creative Anachronism, medieval reenactment, where I do a lot of archery, okay. and I said, I, I'll be taking my archery equipment. And I also happen to have a couple broken arrows, so maybe we could work those in. Hmm. So we did. I became an arrow shirt zombie. <laughs> so I have some like arrows sticking, you know. Out of uh -huh. it. But fortunately, they're cool because they're my own arrows that I make. And uh, it was just a sh again a short segment. I'm gonna say you, you you couldn't do the head one because it would have killed done. you. It's well, been it done. Been, yeah, been killed you as a yeah, So you can stick as many arrows in him as right. you want, but it keeps lumbering along. One through the head, he's done. Okay. I wasn't a running zombie or a you know, slow walking zombie. Mm -hmm. I was sort of in between on that one. We're just trying to hurry to get it done. Right. right. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, actually, um, this week, this evening, mm -hmm. um, uh, whatever day this happens to be, mm -hmm. they are running a premiere of that, pre-release premiere of that in Pittsburgh. Oh, okay. So twelve twenty-four. Twelve twenty-four. Mm -hmm. Okay, about uh, several different uh, zombies of. <laughs> Multi-holiday uh, themed zombies. That, that should be interesting. <laughs> you know, it, 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 yeah, that's an interesting uh, thing, just picking up on what you're saying. Uh, I have no idea what the rest of the movie is about. Okay. I only know what my segment is about. Uh -huh. And the same thing going back to Dawn of the Dead. They said, okay, you're at the helicopter, you're at the, here's the helicopter, here's the airport, and this is what's happening. Okay, cool. I had no idea what was going on with the rest of the movie. It's not like, please come in and consult on the script. We, here's everything that's going on. It's like, no, you're in this segment. Mm -hmm. So, how do you act as a zombie? Well, the only other zombie movie I'd seen, other than from Night of the Living mm -hmm. Dead, were the old black and white... The uh, sugar cane plantation yeah, zombies, voodoo, white zombie... All that, yeah, all that stuff that, uh, uh, rising up from the... Yeah. I said, you know, do I talk in this, or... Mm -hmm. you know, moon, or mm -hmm. uh, what exactly do we do? Whatever you want to do. Okay. <laughs> I love autistic freedom. It's yeah, just, sort of like cool. what we're doing tonight. Yeah, yeah it's <laughs> good and loose. I like that. Too. Well, did they did they ask you? Uh, was there ever an, another option, or did they say you're you're a zombie, or did they did they give you another role? I Dawn of the Dead. Yeah. Oh no 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 no. no you knew you it. were going to be a zombie. Tom cast me for that specific because thing. of your height. I think he said the height, the shape of my head. Okay. Because uh, your head would have obviously had to reach the yes. where the blade yes. was. Okay. Yes. And uh, maybe because he knew me and we worked together and by chance. Uh huh. And often it's not. I've been to a lot of film conventions and sometimes I'll sit around and I'll say, "How'd you ever get in that movie?" Mm -hmm. Well, I was sitting in a bar, or you know, I'd gone to a movie. I'd done this. So a tall man people, walks in a bar. Tall and man walks in a bar. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Boom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One thing leads to another. He's in a movie. <laughs> And it it, uh, it happens like that more often than not. <laughs> I can imagine. So anybody, anybody, could become a film star. Seize the moment. And with that bit of news, let's get back to the movie. And welcome back. And we're going to talk now with Jim Crutt about his uh, theater experience. So now, um, now you you actually founded the you were the founder, right, of Gettysburg Stage? Stage. No, no. I yeah. uh, actually again chance intervenes. Okay. 
a production was going to be put together of a play called You Can't Take It With You. Okay. At the last moment, somebody couldn't make it. And they said, who can we find? And somebody recommended me to the director. Mm -hmm. I'd worked pretty intensely in theater, and I didn't want to just, okay, just fill in and walk around. So I said, let's have lunch and meet before I do any more theater. Mm -hmm. I, I, my feeling of theater was pretty deeply rooted, and I really have a passion for that, as well mm -hmm. as film. So when we sat down and met, I, I realized this person, Steve Wilcoxon, had a lot of a lot of background, a lot of intensity, and I think we were going in the same direction as far as production values. So uh, he cast me in a role. He said, you know, somebody else is going. Do you think you could do a second role in this, too? And I said, yeah. So I put on a trench coat and another hat, and then I became a second person in that. Hmm. And did, did things there. But uh, from that, and a grant from the Adams County Arts Council, which got that started, we decided, hey, there's a lot of common interest here to do a theater company. And, but I was one of the original people in it, involved okay. with it. But Steve Wilcoxon was the founder and original okay. artistic director. Hmm. Now, what's, what, the, you were, what play were you just recently in? We thought, uh, well, to explain a little bit, uh, we take uh, a little edge. To Which one some were you in a habit in? <laughs> <laughs> the habit I was in was uh, Sister Mary Ignatius okay. explains okay. it all for you. Uh, <laughs> we paired that that same evening with Doubt. Mm -hmm. it was just like the, uh, the film that had Meryl Streep in it, but I was Sister Mary Ignatius. Hmm. It was kind of fun greeting the audience, standing there in my habit with the ruler, just keeping an eye on them, keeping them in, keeping them in line. Uh -huh. it, was a, it was interesting productions. Uh, we've had uh, some challenging things we've done. Uh -huh. Little Egypt, I played the mayor of a small town. Uh, it was a bit of a philanderer. So anyway, there's an opportunity to, through theater and really, really through film, mm -hmm. to to uh, live other lives, other existences, in a in a safe fashion. And I think that's right. one of the attractions of film. Hmm. The ones you're showing now, and mm -hmm. the ones that will be made in the future, and the ones we've all seen in the past. It's a it's an experience that you don't have to personally become involved in, mm -hmm. but you can watch it from a safe distance. Right. Generally. Right. <laughs> Well, now you are you are traveling. You're going to conventions. Um, you're going to, uh, in fact, tomorrow you'll be in uh, Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh, the hard and uh, this will be uh, showing after the fact. But um, now, how long after Dawn of the Dead was it before you started going to the conventions? Oh, just like that, about twenty years. Twenty years. Okay, <laughs> just like that. <laughs> That's how fast time goes. Uh, yeah. Someone called me uh, and said, Jim, uh, you remember the film you were in, Dawn of the Dead? Yeah. Yeah, do you remember that? Well, you'll, <laughs> sure, yeah. Well, it's got a great cult following, and they're having a convention in Cleveland, and we'd like you to come out to it. I said, really? Uh -huh. I, I, it wasn't like a huge role for Do you know what your role was? Do you know this is played worldwide, midnight shows and everything? It's a cult classic. Mm -hmm. I said, Oh, that's nice. That's, that's really nice. I'm happy with that. Mm -hmm. But the best part really was that first one going together with folks I hadn't seen, literally, mm -hmm. since the since the making of Dawn of the Dead. Wow. And I got to see Tom again. I got to see uh, Nick Tallow, uh, Dave Early, some of the other folks, Lynn Lees. I hadn't even met Lynn Lees before. Mm -hmm. Machete's always. Machete's always, right. And uh, we became close friends because we happened to be sitting next to each other and What's going on? I don't know. People want our autographs. Oh, okay. Were you surprised when you received this phone call? Or yeah, that, I was astounded. Yeah. I thought, well, what the heck? Wasn't had the time. Uh -huh. I was amazed. Yes. So it got me into that sort of convention mindset of, gee, all this stuff is really going on, and a lot of people still aren't aware of it. Mm -hmm. But uh, people travel. And that first one, there was a, a fellow who flew in from Japan, just to meet some of the people from Dawn of the Dead. Wow. People were driving up from Texas, California, Georgia, traveling long distances to meet and talk with and get souvenirs from or autographs from and have their picture taken with people from one of their favorite movies. That's incredible. Uh, the horror and I think the horror and sci-fi genres have the most devoted fans. You know, there is a question, what is the typical fan for any of the horror films? And there is none. Mm -hmm. uh, I've had little kids that come up and say, I want to sit on your lap, for my picture. And, and I've had you know, grandparents and, and folks mm -hmm. in between. 
Dawn of the Dead last year was its 30th anniversary. And a lot of the people who were fans coming up weren't even born at that time. Right, right. Wow. <laughs> it's a revelation for me, too. Yeah. Well, I, when I was talking to uh, Tom Savini last, year, last October, and, and I mentioned, you know, this is the 40th year anniversary of the movie, and he, he says, wow, yeah, 40 years. I mean, for Night of the Living for Dead. For Night of the Living right. Dead. Now, for, for Dawn of the Dead, does it, I mean, does it seem like a long time has passed? Uh, yes, in some ways uh, yeah. it does. But when you get back together with all the folks you've worked with mm -hmm. and keep up with them, there's a continuum there. Uh, I, w I did a show outside of Washington last year, and George Romero was there. Mm -hmm. That's the first I'd seen him in 30 odd years. Wow. And there were folks there from Night of the Living Dead, Dawn of the Dead, Day of the Dead, Land of the Dead, Diary of the Dead. It was like like the George Romero Living Museum yeah, of people, yeah. and they're, they're still alive. I yeah. had somebody ask me once on a radio show, you know, Jim, has anybody passed away from your group who mm -hmm. was in Dawn of the... I said, well, it's on the uh, WGET in Gettysburg. I said, Fred, Fred Snyder was the host. I said, Fred, after all, it is a zombie movie. Mm -hmm. They never die. They just keep coming back. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, a few weeks ago in August, we did lose right. uh, Clayton Hill, right. who was the armorer, as well as in Four Dawn of the Dead, handled all the weapons, mm -hmm. and um, did um, a, a couple roles as a lead zombie in, mm -hmm. in Dawn of the Dead. Mm -hmm. uh, interestingly, just briefly, uh, I went to, went to the viewing, and the funeral home had the Dawn of the Dead posters everywhere. Did they really? Yes. Wow. wow. So it was like. More of a celebration than a tribute. Wow, wow, that's 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 different. So, well, Jim, thank you very much for being on the show tonight. Brian, it's been a pleasure. It has it's been a pleasure. pleasure. Thank you. Thanks for being here in Gettysburg. I I've enjoyed my day. It's it's been a great day. We have plenty of ghosts if you need to take any back. Home <laughs> I probably will take some back <laughs> home with me. <laughs> Thanks again, and thank you for joining us tonight. Let's uh, wrap up the night and let's get back to the movie.